Hello again, Terry Caliendo of Dedicated Managers, and uh, I think this is going to be my final video. And in here, I'm going to talk about um, the Firebase database and, and some of the code that it takes just to talk back and forth between uh, my application here uh, and my real-time updates between um, this uh, this view here and the storage uh, back here. So if I pull out uh, my storage here, and um, I showed this earlier on in the initial um, uh, uh, you know, showing of how my, my app works. Um, so I can pretty much, um, you can see that the data was the same. I had a Terry 2 here, but when I submit this, it's now going to update in the database to just Terry. And again, I can, you know, update in the database um, and it's going to show up right here real time back in my um, in, in my application. Now again, this application can be run, ultimately it's going to have a www website, it's not going to be run on a local host, it's going to be run, you know, um, like this www.fosterkinship.org. Uh, it'll have a domain name and it'll run just like any other website, um, but it's going to talk asynchronously or, or, or you know, uh, real time asynchronously back and forth between the two and, and give that real time um, uh, database uh, as far as the project goes. So let's start to talk about the um, the code that goes into making this happen. And again, this is all handled by the Firebase object. In, in, in the past, I would have to set up you know this HTML form. I'd have to probably set up jQuery to talk to the form and then make asynchronous calls from jQuery back to a database, maybe in MySQL database, um, and, and have the MySQL then insert you know, all, the, all the different features and have it spit it back out. There was all these different things you needed to use in, in your timeline or in your, in your pipeline, whereas you'll see now in, in code, um, let's, let's start with this primary caregiver view. So that would be the client view. Here's primary caregiver. That's the H1. That's this right here. And then these are my different fields. Um, you can see um, first name, middle name, last name, first name, middle name, last name, and then my submit button. Um, and so when the submit button is called, it says, hey, um, you know, run this method submit and reach out to my storage, which is my global object, and, and run um, dispatch means run an asynchronous call. Uh, I talked about that back in the Vuex a little bit, the Vuex video. Call this set primary by get care or set primary caregiver by ID. So I'm going to send this, take this information. Um, you notice I didn't have to say, hey, go and get I, down here. I didn't have to say, hey, which which field is which. It's just all saved right into my object. Um, this current primary relative caregiver object. It's all just put in there, and then I can just send that to my to my call. So. Again, we're calling submit. Let's go to the store. Let's find this function. And in the store, I've got this function set primary caregiver by ID. And I pass my object in. And it's just as simple as using my Firebase object, which we remember we instantiated back here in the beginning. We imported it here, um, set up its parameters here, and then um, um, you know initialized it here. So now it's available for us. As long as we import it, um, you know, here in our tell tell Webpack to import it here and understand that this is the variable we want to use for it. Um, so now it's available for me to act on, and I say, hey, um, you know, Firebase, uh, reach into the Firestore and and get me the collection from the the primary relative caregiver um, collection. So let's go into. Uh, did I lose my store? Oh, that's right, I, I popped it out. Um, Let's put it back in. Um, so, actually, that's too big. Let's. Here's the store. Reach into my primary um, relative caregiver um, collection and get me the um, the document with the current primary relative caregiver ID. And that's actually, you know, kind of set here and it's passed in and then passed all the way through. Um, and so that would be on this page, it's the one starting with EK. So that's this one, EK, and get me that collection. Um, and so just send this object, send this, um, you know, uh, here's where I do the set. So here's the ID that the, here's the collection. 
Here's the document, which is this right here. This is the collections. This is the actual documents. Uh, that's what they call them in, in this storage. They call them documents. And I find the one with the, the ID that I'm looking for, which happens to be this EK one. Um, and then set the current primary caregiver data stuff. Uh, just as far as you're concerned, it's, you know, set the current primary caregiver object uh, right here. So that's that's it. That's all I have to do is just say, hey, you know, go save this stuff for me so that I can get it back later. And, and that's what um, Firestore allows us to do. And in fact, here's the when I retrieve it. If we look at the client view, when I first load client view, this created function is called, and it actually says, hey, go to the store, um, you know, get the primary caregiver relative, the primary relative caregiver from the ID, um, and, and this ID is actually, you know, passed in. It's one of my props that's passed in. Um, that it's actually uh, a long way to get there, but it's through the um, the routing object. So if I look at router here, it's this variable um, gets passed. Um, um, I say send send the variables as a prop through to the the client. So then it shows up here as a prop, and then um, I'm able to take the client ID and pass it to the tell it to which client I want to get. So I want to get uh, I want to go to the global storage and call this function, get primary relative caregiver by ID. So let's go there. I'm, I'm in the storage. Um, I get the primary relative caregiver by ID. Um, I send it the ID and then that ends up going to um, the Firestore and, and making a call on the collection. Um, same collection that I, that I was writing to before, this time I'm calling from it. And um, I'm calling the, the the document by the ID and now here um, is actually an interesting thing so let's go full screen and, and realize that so what I'm setting up here this is now uh, an on snapshot so this actually sets up the um, the uh, what do you call it the the asynchronous um, talking back and forth the web sockets um, it's all done for me. You, you don't see me implementing a WebSocket or anything. Firebase just does that for me, sets up those WebSockets with its server. I don't even have to, you know, deal with the server. What kind of server? You know, Apache can't handle WebSockets. Um, you know, you'd have to get into an NPM um, or, or a node server to start handling WebSockets in, in natively in a, in a good fashion. Um, but that's all done for me with the Firestore database. Um, it, it's all it's all handled ba on the back end. And I just send, set this object that whenever this, um, it, whenever the the information changes, run this function. And all this function does is it sets my global object, um, current primary relative caregiver. That's this, um, you know, this user object here that I call. Um, just set it as as this object, and and um, and and put this the data that I called. Uh, put it in into that that object. Now I'm doing a little extra bit here to, to make my life easier in a certain way, um, but but from a global perspective, um, you know the the client um, on load the created function goes and gets the information from from the store. So the store um, calls gets called. It calls Firebase. Firebase gets the information and sends it back uh, or actually loads it into this object here, um, this current primary relative caregiver object. And view being reactive, um, that's, that's a whole other thing to learn about with view is that when things change, view knows to, to go and update the, the, what the person is seeing. So when this is completed, when this is changed by that as asynchronous call, um, client will 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 then the, the the form will then get updated with the newest um, object and its parameters. So um, I know I'm kind of falling apart here as far as my explanation. I'm kind of running out of voice. I've been talking for about two hours at this point. Um, but hopefully you can see that uh, you know at, at the at the top level um, Firestore 
it, it takes a, all the, there's, I'm not running a database anywhere. I'm not in charge of the database. I don't have to handle the patches, the updates of the database. It's all done for me by uh, Google. I just use their API and their simple function calls um, in my storage, um, you know, just uh, to, to either um, set the data or effectively get the, whoops, or effectively using this to get the data. Um, so it's it's just it makes your life so much easier, uh, and, and the implementation is is so much faster. Um, so hopefully you got something out of that. Hopefully you got something out of all these videos. Uh, I appreciate if you did stick around. Um, you're, you're an amazing person. Um, that if you're still awake and listening to all this, and if I if I was clear. Um, I didn't take a lot of time to really make sure everything I was saying was clear. Um, again, I'm in the middle of this project and a bunch of other projects, but I wanted to just get this information out and just show from a high level, um, you know, how cool some of this stuff is and, and, and just show what dedicated managers can do for, for clients. Um, so if you're getting into this, um, if you're just, you know, looking for something and you're out there looking for a new um, you know, a new way to, to get something done for yourself and you need somebody to, to do all this stuff for you. That's where dedicated managers comes in. Or if you're a programmer and you need some help, feel free to, um, you know, shoot me a message. I'm glad to help you uh, and point you in the right direction of wherever you may need to go. So again, Terry Caliendo from dedicatedmanagers.com. Thanks again for paying attention for as long as you made it uh, in these videos. Uh, take care. Have a great day. And, and hopefully we'll see you around. Um, Please do stop by uh, my website, www.dedicatedmanagers.com, um, and, and follow. Um, you can follow me on Facebook. Um, follow us on Facebook. Uh, we'll see if it loads here. Um, there we are on Facebook, and you can get you know subscribe and get all the all the different articles that we post um, to the uh, to the blog or you can join the newsletter letter and we'll tell you about when a new blog comes out so again thanks a lot have a great day uh, enjoy your your world of programming and, uh, and let, let us know if you need any help <laughs>